Europe, because if this is only the part of the transborder claims or not, this is not so important. Important is that we have the problems on the international market, and uh, what the question is what we can uh, could do all together, separately on different markets, on also all together to improve the situation. And the main question, maybe not the main, but the first question for the market is how to earn money satisfying the victim. Is there any contradiction? Because usually we think we will sell the policy hoping that we will not pay the compensation. Not in the sense that we don't want to pay, that we hope there will be no accident. This is obvious, because the difference minus the costs, this could be the profit of the insurance, uh, insurance companies, insurance market, and this would be the profit for the states when we will pay the taxes. So the question is, as I have mentioned on the screen, how we can do it, how we can do it. Unfortunately, as you know, not always uh, we are successful. And from time to time, uh, we are faced on different markets. Doesn't matter if the markets are big or small, they are from the west or east, we are faced with the insolvency. So the next question is to, again, with the word satisfy, uh, satisfaction, how to satisfy the victims in the case of the insolvency? Because insolvency is absolutely the worst what could happen with the insurance company. Not only because of money, but also because of the reputation of the all market. And here, as we are sitting, we are the specialists, uh, we are specialized on insurance. Uh, and we are working for the insurance industry. Doesn't matter if we are the lawyers, uh, independent lawyers, or we are working directly in the insurance companies, or we are working uh, in the associ different association and companies supporting uh, the uh, insurance uh, market. Let me share some uh, reflections with you. As I have mentioned, the problem uh, with regarding the insolvency we can observe on all the markets, as I have said before. And this is nothing new because this problem exists as from the beginning of the insurance activity in the past. And we should remember about it. And uh, as we know, the modern insurance we times we count from the from the 17th century, from Mr. Lloyd. This is the man who introduced the modern way of insurance. This was not regarding the MTPL, it's famous now. And the MTPL, as you know, is the biggest part of the non-life business on all the European markets. So the MTPL has the biggest impact, except the different catastrophes we could see uh, from time to time uh, across the world. This is, MTPL has a very important impact on all the insurance industry everywhere. The problem uh, um, real, uh, the problems relate to different aspects. That's the first, this is the question of money. If we have enough money to create and to manage the insurance activity. The second, if we have enough of experienced staff what was not less important. The next one, if we are able to calculate on a rational level the price of the product. The fourth one, if we are able to organize the system 
of claim settlement. The fifth one, if we are able to calculate and minimize the internal costs. The sixth one, or the seventh one, is if we have a, a good network of the agents or maybe we intend to sell the uh, policies via internet, call center, how we can verify the clients. This is a very important aspect. Then, are we able to have a central database of the issued policies? Are we have, do we have the access to the central database of the registered vehicles? Do we have any chance to organize on a national market the central database of paid claims? What is not so usual, but helps very, very much. And finally, if we are really prudent, transparent, and if we are able to convince the clients to come to us, but they will come to us only when we will be able to deliver a good service to them. If not, we will be the losers. Transborder aspects. This is the main topic of my presentation, but please remember that uh, all the remarks will re relate to, uh, the uh, to the national uh, markets uh, uh, as well. So, as you see on the screen, this is quite big area is covered now by the transborder claim settlement organized by Council of Bureau. Uh, please remember that within the Council of Bureau, uh, we are dealing with two pillars of the claims, uh, not only claims, uh, the, the organization is responsible for facilitating facilitation of the transborder traffic and claim settlement. This is the, the second pillar. And within this organization, we have two pillars. It means the green card pillar relates to the uh, accidents caused by the visiting parties. It means if somebody uh, entered Turkey and spent, uh, caused an accident based on a green card uh, part, uh, agreement, the claim will be paid to the victim who has the permanent stay here in Turkey, and then the proper insurance company where the vehicle was insured will be reimbursed by the Turkish Bureau or the, the claims agent of the Turkish Bureau or correspondent. The second pillar is the protection of visitors pillar, and this uh, is usually the pillar, it exists uh, within the EU countries, plus some other countries, as uh, Norway, uh, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Iceland. And these pillars give the additional uh, guarantee for the victims. Uh, they visited another country. So it means when I'm going by, um, uh, by my car to Germany, not only me can cause the accident against the German people, but also I could be the victim because somebody from Germany or from other country could cause the accident and the question is if I could receive the compensation in such case. Yes, we could. Within Council of Bureau, uh, we developed as well a special agreement uh, because our intention is to integrate the non-EU countries as well and this agreement based on this motor insurance directive, protection of visitor directive, and that there are special provisions giving the chance to receive uh, the information about the insurance cover, information about the, um, uh, the low uh, compensation law on a certain territory, and the access to the insurance companies they are responsible for the accidents. So as you see, this is very wide system, and every uh, uh, obstacles they could appear could create a lot of problems for all of us and especially for the victims. The green card system, as you see, uh, exists since uh, 49 with the 
long history in our days, 67 years. And we have uh, 47 members recently, uh, as from the 1st January this year, uh, the Bureau of Azerbaijan is active in our system and we are very proud that uh, you applied for the membership and that uh, we support our colleagues, our young colleagues in our family, in our club uh, very much. And we are operating in 48 countries. Uh, why is the difference? Because Liechtenstein is not a separately a member, is, uh, 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 but is, uh, um, um, how to say, let's say, covered by the activity of uh, Swiss Bureau. There is a lot of uh, claims every year, uh, more or less for on a trust border claims, about 400,000 claims, and we are exchanging uh, most, uh, more than 2 billion euro every year, only for those trans border claims. As you see, this is quite a lot of money, and I think if everybody of us could receive only 1%, it wouldn't be bad for us. Yeah? But unfortunately, there is no chance. Only the victims, they could receive this money. And we have to secure the free transfer of this money. Why? Because all the system, as well the all MTPL system in every country has only one aim. And the aim is the consumer protection. And we shouldn't forget that the consumer is not only the victim of the accident, it must be protected by law in every country, but also the insured person. Why? Because selling the MTPL policy, we are offering to the insured person the full security until the limits, they are in certain countries, that until this limit, this person is free from all the financial consequences of the, uh, the they, are, they relate to the accident, they are caused by this person. Additionally, the person who is insured by MTPL has the possibility to, tra to travel to another countries. Among some countries based on a domestic MTPL, on, in some countries, the additionally is they need to have the certificate of the green card. But this is not important. Important is that the MTPL was developed in, at the end of 19th century not to earn money, basically. It was introduced to secure the people, they are the owners of the vehicles, and secondly, the people they could be the victims. And this became extremely important from the moment when the production of the vehicles increased rapidly. It was in 20s, in 20s, 20th century. And uh, in avant-garde of this MTPL development, there were Nordic countries, Sweden, Sweden, they are still now uh, very, uh, very innovative uh, in, in insurance business. Maybe somebody could say they are a bit separated from the Central Europe, but the traffic still exists. They have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of vehicles, and they are very, very, how to say, uh, proud that the level of the the, new, uh, the level of the accidents is going down. So it's very important. This has a very impor big importance for all of us. That except of earning money, except of serving to the victims and to the clients of the insurance companies, we are responsible to do everything to promote safety on roads. And very often, very often, we forget about our obligation in this area. So, please remember that we are obliged to secure the consumers, the insured persons. They can't be financially involved in any 
in any consequences of the accident, up to the limits, of course, and the victims. The victims should receive the compensation on the level provided by the national law. No less, no more. But unfortunately, we are faced with the insolvency. Of course, there are different reasons of the insolvency, but more or less we can name some typical uh, moments they could lead to this insolvency and to the very difficult moments for the insurance companies, insurance industry in, uh, on national level, but also international level. The first, let's name the bodies they could be involved in such uh, a negative situation on particular markets. The first, they are of course insurers, because insurance company could be insolvent, could disappear from the market. Secondly, somebody has to pay for this insolvency. It means, again, the insurance. Insurers, they stay on the market. Because if not the insurers, the question is who? For sure, not the state from the taxes. The state always need more money they want to spend. So, somebody has to pay for this, that are the insurers. But in fact, who is the final payer? Not the insurers, not the shareholders. The final payers are the people they are paying for the insurance cover. So we can refer to the previous uh, slide, the customer, the insured person. Why the insured person, except to receive the cover for the insurance company, should pay for the insolvency of another insurance company? Why? The cover, it means, is not on a sufficient level because every insurance insolvency costs the increase of the costs for the clients. Secondly, uh, the, the national bureaus, because they are operating within the uh, 48 countries, as you remember from my previous slide, and they are involved in the claim settlement. They are involved in the facilitation of the road traffic. If the insurance company is insolvent, this could harm the free transfer driving from one country to another country. It means the person who was insured in one company, it went bankrupt, need to pay for another insurance. It would be valid. So it's not fair for the people they are uh, honestly paying for the insurance uh, uh, security. And the National Bureau has also the problem how to finance the claims. They must be settled in the name of the foreign market where the insurance company is, was, is registered. Then, then is the guarantee fund. Unfortunately, one word is missing but I prepared the presentation by myself. I'm very sorry. So the guarantee fund, because usually in the majority countries, the guarantee funds I prepared or should be prepared to settle the claims of all the victims, of all the accidents caused by the uh, people they were unfortunately insured in this insolvent company. The guarantee funds should be equipped with the sufficient money, sufficient reserves for the case of the, uh, of the insolvency. On certain markets, as for example in, on the Polish market, there is, in the guarantee fund, there is a specific sub-fund. Um, this could be used for the insurance company it would be interested to take over the company is in uh, troubles. Because, why we have the sub fund? Because it is cheaper for the insurance industry 
to take over all the risks and to avoid the insolvency, but such company needs the financial help because if they will take all the risk, immediately uh, all the factors, financial factors, could go down. So to secure these factors on the same level they was before, we have a special sub-fund. This could be used for such company, it would be interested. And there is additional, very important aspect that this positive psychological effect. Look, we solved the problem by ourselves. Nothing happened for you, for the clients. You can trust to us, to the insurers. So, as you see, there are different methods to secure and the guarantee fund could be proactive on this area as well. And finally, there are compensation bodies. There is, they are the bodies they are mentioned in the directive on the protection of visitors. They are responsible for the compensation to the victims uh, in specific area. What could be the symptoms of the potential problems in the future? Of course, I know they are not all they are mentioned on the screen, but they, these symptoms we can observe everywhere. And please remember that the insolvency could happen everywhere. Doesn't matter if we are in the east, west, south, north. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have the examples from different markets. I could name. It was in Romania still, there is a problem with Astra. There was the company in, uh, in uh, Netherlands, INEA. This was the company in, uh, in Hungary, MAF. So I could give many names of the companies they went uh, bankrupt in the, uh, in the last years. So you see the, the problems, the symptoms on the screen, and I think it's not necessary uh, to talk about it in details because they are very specific. But all of them, to lead, they lead to the technical losses. And the technical losses, they could repeat, uh, repeat in a certain period. There is a very important signal for, uh, for all the industry and for the authorities. About the uh, activity of the authorities, I would uh, say something later on. So, the consequences of the bankruptcy you can see on the screen, and for sure there is not a need uh, to, uh, to talk about it very long. I, I'm sure we all we agree with uh, these um, six points I have mentioned on the, on the screen. But this means also the insolvency, that doesn't mean that if one company went insolvent, we should be very happy because we will lose one of the competitors, not vice versa. We will be the losers as well. And based on uh, my uh, experience, international experience, I could tell you that is not an added value for the remaining companies on the market. Usually they have additional problems uh, with the clients. So what are the practical problems with the insolvency. There is the question of the continuity of the insurance cover for the, for the uh, insured persons. This is the first. Secondly, there is the question, so it means there's termination of the contracts, usually on different markets. If the company went, uh, goes bankrupt, there is a finish of the insurance contract. What does it mean? The insured person until this moment, have to pay for the additional cover. So this is not fair to them. Of course not, they are angry. Then there is a claim settlement. It's immediately they need to fix the bodies they are responsible of the claim settlement and to find the financial sources for the guarantee bureau uh, for the guarantee, National Bureau and the Guarantee Fund because finally they are responsible for their claims uh, settlement and paying the compensation, final 
paying payments of the compensation to the victims. On an international level, this is additional problem. This means that uh, it's necessary to compare the national laws and check what are the differences and if the victim will be, uh, will be uh, that the claims of the victims will be covered on at the same level as the, in the place where they live. From time to time, this is totally different uh, uh, regulation and it's necessary to compare them and uh, find a proper solution and to satisfy the victims. How to avoid the problems? How to avoid the problems? This is a very important question and uh, I think we need to monitor the situation. When we know what could be the symptoms and we know a, a lot about the, uh, our own markets, we can monitor the, uh, the, the situation and I think there is a need that the uh, domestic insurance organization for example, the uh, Chamber of the Insurers should speak internally very openly and uh, to talk about it. They shouldn't avoid any internal conversation. Additionally, what is extremely important that um, there's the role of the supervisory authorities. Nobody likes to be supervised, even in private life. But in such activity as banking and insurance, we need a professional supervisors, supervisors. We need to be supervised. And the most important is not to be supervised from the formal point of view, if all the paragraphs are correct, not. The supervisors need to be prepared professionally, professionally. They need to have good uh, actuaries. Within the European community, there is not the possibility to fix the, uh, the premiums by the state, by the authorities. And the authorities, they don't have a, any right to influence directly the internal policy of the uh, tarification of the insurance company. But the authorities have another method they could use. They are afraid in many cases because from time to time they are not really professionally prepared. By the, there is the obligation of the authorities. They should check the level of the reserves. And for this they need a good address. And using this way from the from the back side, they could, they could convince the insurers using the administrative methods as well to fix the tariffs on a proper way. So, we should find some ways to cooperate on this area. And uh, as I have mentioned, this is very important, this aspect of the cooperation with the authorities. To cooperate with them, not to wait for the action. We must be, as an insurance industry, proactive. Proactive. And at the end, you see two phenomena they cause a lot of problems for all the industry. So, what we need? We need better cooperation and to understand the competition doesn't exclude, exclude the cooperation. This is one of the biggest problems we can observe on many markets. The, the colleagues, they forget that the cooperation leads to the profits. So again, the question how we could uh, secure the customers, I hope I mentioned some uh, some potential solutions and uh, the final loser is always the shareholder but the final payer the final payer is always 
the uh, the person who pay for the uh, for the uh, insurance security and uh, not only shareholders are involved in fact they are not they never pay for the losses of the insurance company unfortunately but the payers as i have mentioned they can lose only the profits but uh, but the final payers as uh, are only the uh, the insured persons so the profit is welcomed and uh, everybody is free to organize the insurance company fix the reserves but we should uh, follow certain rules to secure a